Hi, this is Tracy here with another edition of a View from Tracy's Point, and we are here to continue our conversation about Nene Leakes and her departure from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And if you guys watched my video that I did the other day, I talked about Nene Leakes and the issue that she had to address with Wendy Williams going on Watch What Happens Live and Andy Cohen asking Wendy, you know, her thoughts on Nene leaving the Real Housewives of Atlanta and Wendy made some negative comments. And so I'll drop that link above if you want to check that out. Well, yesterday Nene Leakes appeared on the Tamron Hall show. I believe it was yesterday. Uh, I can't really figure out when she airs. I had to like hunt down the time and station that she comes on here. So it aired here in Florida on yesterday. And so Tamron Hall, you know, she acknowledged that she had booked Nene prior to the whole, her leaving the Real Housewives of Atlanta and the controversy that took place last week where, you know, people were coming for her and calling her a mean girl and all of that. And so Nene said, then when they called to book the show that she was planning to leave the show and so they weren't sure if she was still going to come on and do the interview but Nene um, said that she was going to honor her word and come on the show. So before I get into what their conversation was about, Eva Marsage, you know, she is no longer on Real Housewives of Atlanta. She lost her peach and so she had said on the is it the Ricky Smiley show that she fills in for Portia sometimes? But she said that Nene was leading a charge to file a class action lawsuit against Bravo, Andy Cohen, and whoever their parent company is. I don't know if it's Viacom or not, but anyway, they were planning this class action lawsuit. So I'm not sure if a lot of what's going on right now is leading up to that lawsuit and you know Nene trying to expose Andy and the rest of the team you know for their treatment of minorities and women but what she shed a little bit light on in this interview Eva had said that you know of course to have a class action lawsuit you would have to have multiple people in the lawsuit and so Eva said that there were women who were signing on to be a part of this lawsuit if it gets off the ground and then in this interview Nene shared that she was basically speaking up for well women in general who she feel are being discriminated against and the backroom treatment that they are receiving from Andy and Bravo but more specifically she wants to advocate for women who were like the original cast members of these shows who were eventually forced out over time and that that is where her main concern is and that's what she believes has happened to her. So let's go ahead and get into this. So, you know, Tamron opened up and basically told Nene that, you know, her show was a safe space, safe space for people you know, to speak and share their stories and tell their truth, you know, and that she wasn't going to allow her platform, you know, to be like a launching pad for anything negative. And so Nini understood that. And so she pointed out the fact that Nini being on Bravo, being on Real Housewives of Atlanta has opened many doors for her. And, you know, she outlined how Nini was on Broadway in Chicago and Cinderella, how she landed a role on the show Glee. She was a participant in Dancing with the Stars. And then, you know, she's had hosting gigs on Entertainment Tonight, um, Hollywood Access. And so Nene definitely has built a name for herself in the industry. You know, people like her, they like her charm, they like her charisma. I don't know how much of that was Nene and Nene's team. 
as much as it may have been Bravo and Andy speaking up for Nene and encouraging people to give her a chance because you know Nene at one point and I believe she said herself that she is the most featured guest on Watch What Happens Live from any of the Housewives shows and so obviously her and Andy had some kind of connection and that connection has broken down over time. And so Nene posted video the other day, it was either Nene or Peter, posted video the other day, Peter turned 60 years old. And when I'm talking about Peter, I'm talking about um, Cynthia's ex-husband, Peter. You know, he used to be on the show. And so he turned 60, Nene flew down to Miami to help him celebrate. Um, Nene was toe up from the flow up, okay? <laughs> she was all loud and everything. And Peter was filming her and so, then she posted another video where she was with another friend of hers, someone named Tara, I can't remember her last name, and just basically showing that she does have people in her corner that are supporting her. And I mean, at times I feel like Nini is trying too hard to prove a point, like a lot of what she's doing now isn't really coming out as natural, it's coming out as more, you know, being staged. And so she told Tamron that Tamron Hall that she went to Miami because she needed to get out of Atlanta and clear her head because so much was going on and she just needed a break and needed to get away. So a little bit of a contradiction there. So Tamron, um, you know, shared with Nene that she started watching Real Housewives of Atlanta because of Nene. You know, she was hearing all this chatter about the show and she wanted to check it out and see what was going on. And so she started watching the show and became a big fan. And then she does acknowledge later on in the show that she stopped watching Real Housewives of Atlanta after the Kenya and Portia fight because she felt that it was negative and degrading to women. And it really started highlighting the negativity on the show. And I guess she was okay with the negativity as long as it was just, you know, bantering back and forth But when it became physical, she was like, okay, pump the brakes, it's going too far. So um, Nene also told Tamron that uh, Greg advised her to take the deal that she was offered on the show and that what she was offered was six episodes where she normally gets 18 to 20 episodes. And Tamron asked her about her pay, you know, were they cutting her pay? And so Nene said that she was going to receive the same pay. And so I don't think that Tamron really understood because it's my understanding that they are paid a set amount of money per episode. And Nene was making like $1.5 million or something per episode. Not sure if that's true or has ever been verified. So if we go with the $1.5 million, 1.5 million times 18 is a whole lot more money than 1.5 million times six. Okay, now for me, you know, that's what, $9 million, I would have been happy with that, okay? <laughs> but I guess, you know, Nene thinks she has more value. And then I'm sure there was other things because, you know, you got Kenya Moore with her annoying self, you know, and just her total disrespect and she makes my soul cringe, okay? That's how much I do not like Kenya. And so I can see, you know, if you think that your value is and I'm just counting this off my head, um, 18 million, 18 and a half, nine. So Nene was looking at making close to $30 million, 1.5. Yeah, like between 25 and $30 million, dropping down to, you know, this nine million. And don't quote me on my math because I'm doing this off the top of my head. So I can see where she would be offended by that. And so she says that in the past few years that she felt forced out and forced into a role that was diminishing and that every year they were giving her less and less episodes. And so it was sort of like, we're gonna keep you on, we're gonna keep renewing your contract, but we're just gonna do things to grate on your nerves to the point where you quit. And then once you quit, 
you know, that's the end of it. You can't say that we fired you or we did anything to you because now we have this documentation that, hey, she was offered the contract. This is the deal that she was offered. And I'm sure Bravo legal team, you know, will be able to substantiate why they felt, you know, Nene deserved less shows per season. So that would be interesting. Like if this does go to a lawsuit, how they will explain, you know, cutting her episodes. And then she was saying that people, you know, were saying that she was holding out, you know, trying to get more money. But she said that what she was actually doing was trying to figure out why she was being given small, a smaller role on the show that she helped build and helped create. So then Tamron said, you know, if you are the secret sauce, why are they forcing you out? Is there more to it than what you're saying? And then she talk up, we'll talk about the bullying aspect and how people say that Nene's so negative. And when she is on the show, you know, she act like she doesn't really want to be there. So Nene said that there were things happening behind the scenes, but she can't speak on them right now. But in the long run, all these things will be revealed. So Tamron said that you have said that there was discrimination and systemic racism. What specifically was happening? And so Nene, she started talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac and how their original cast members are taken out, are taken out. And so we know that Sharice, I believe, was the one that came up with the idea of the show. And she is gone and they bring her back every now and then in the friend role. And then there was the other girl, the ditzy girl that was with the white guy and they weren't married, but I think they're not together anymore. And she actually came back last season on the show. And, you know, so she was one of the original cast members. And then, you know, they brought in Monique, they brought in Candace, you know, to fill those two spots. But she's saying that if you look at the franchises overall and the Married to Medicines and those type of things, they force the people out. You know, same thing with Mariah. You know, Mariah is the executive producer of Married to Medicine Atlanta. And that's pretty much the reason why she still has a part on the show. You know, it's because she is the executive producer. But if they had their way, they would kick Mariah off that show. Tamara goes on to say, you know, Bravo declined the comment. They reached out to him to ask them, you know, what was going on, but they said that, you know, they couldn't talk about it. And so she says that the heart of the discrimination claims needs to be talked about. And can you prove the allegations um, and are you taking legal action? And so Nene said that she hoped it doesn't come you know, have to go that route and that they can sit down and talk about things and come to an agreement. Uh, she says that these people were like family to me and that's why it's so hurtful to her. You know, and there were points in the interview where Nene began to cry. And I can't say that she was as sincere in crying on this interview as she was in her farewell video. Now, when she cried in the video that she did after, you know, it became final that she wasn't going to return for season 13, like she genuinely looked like she, you know, was trying to hold back the tears and try to be strong. Now that really came across as genuine. I can't say I felt the same in this interview. So, you know, she talked about, you know, these people were like family and she says that we only see what's happening on the surface, not what is happening behind the scenes. And then, you know, that's when she started to cry. And so Tamara, Tamron was like, what's hurting you the most? And Nene said, being loyal to people and not getting the same in return. And I think we all can speak to that, you know, like you're going all out for somebody else and they won't do the same thing for you. And I know personally, I have felt that several times with people, so I can relate to that. And so then Tamara, you know, she asked the big question, what do you want? What do you expect to come from all of this? Do you want to get back on the show? Like, tell us what's going on. And so Nene said that all she wants is fair treatment because she hasn't done anything wrong and she doesn't feel that she has deserved, you know, what's happening to her. And so she, Tamara next, so you know, do you want to change, since you don't want to go back to the show, do you want to change the culture? 
And Nene says, you know, once again, she doesn't want to return to Real Housewives of Atlanta, but would like a seat at the table so no other woman has to go to go through what she's going through. And she was speaking more on, you know, the negativity and how, you know, the franchises don't do well if the women aren't fighting and treating each other wrong. And so she wants to change that perception. But I think what Nene has to realize is the audience is dictating how the shows are being received. And we've seen it time and time again where reality shows come out, where people are trying to be positive and uplifting and people tune out. And then the minute they start with the negativity, then all of a sudden people are tuning in. Love and Marriage Huntsville. And they are a prime example in the first episode, you know, they the first season, they were very natural. They were being themselves, you know, opening up, you know, the different dynamics of their marriages. And people weren't really interested in that. But then as soon as the couple that created the show started talking about the husband was cheating on her and they may be going through a divorce, people were tuned in then. They wanted to hear about that. And so I think that the audience is the one that's driving the negativity that we see on these shows. So I don't know how much Nini can do to change that perception without changing the audience's mindset. So Tamron um, said, you know, that I already told you this part when she said that she stopped watching after the fight with Kenya and Portia. She said it was very degrading. And people have tweeted her saying, you know, be careful bringing Nene onto your show because Nene is a very mean-spirited person and she's a bully and she wants to get back at people and that she was going to use Tamlin's platform, you know, to make jabs and negative comments at people. And that was the purpose of the disclosure at the beginning of the show where she says that, you know, you can use my platform to tell your story, to tell your truth, but it won't be used for anything negative. And so Nene said that she would never get on anybody's platform if she wasn't serious and telling, you know, if she wasn't serious and telling the truth about, you know, what she's going through. Um, she says that those shows have been, were built on drama. So yes, people will say that about me. Um, that doesn't mean things aren't, are not happening behind the scene because you see me acting a certain way on the television show, you know, nobody knows what has been said to me and what has been done to me, you know, in the production room. And then you have editing going on where, you know, which, you know, well, you guys know how reality TV <laughs> works. And, you know, we see it all the time. And, you know, with people editing things out, I mean, I think we, even as YouTube creators, we edit things out, you know, like we go back and watch videos, even people who do live videos will go back and edit out things that may not look, make them look good, um, comments that people have said, you know, that could cause conflict that they don't want to perceive as believing in a certain view. And so I can definitely understand what Mimi is saying about that. So then Tamron said, tell me what you were feeling when you decided to take to the social media and vent you know, talking about the Wendy Williams situation and the accusations that, you know, Nene had made. And so Nene said that she only meant to do the video, the first video, thanking her team and, you know, despite what was happening behind the scenes and was going to go away and heal. But then Andy decided to bring Wendy on. Then Wendy made the negative comments and then she, you know, got in her feelings and she responded. And so, you know, Tamron, you know, I think kind of told her, like, you know, sometimes you need to just do the video and then wait, okay, before you post the video because you don't want to come out a certain way. And I know I did two videos about, about two or three weeks ago, and I was kind of feeling uneasy about the videos because I was talking about some personal experiences that I've had, you know, on YouTube, dealing with YouTube. And so I you know, got the videos finished, uploaded and everything. And then when they were approved for monetization by YouTube, I said, you know what? I really don't want to post these videos. And so those videos, you know, they're still sitting out there and I might post them one day. But at the moment I say, you know what? It's kind of negative. I'm not going to post the video. So I can understand that whole, go ahead and make the video. 
but then put the video off to the side, go have a cup of coffee, have a drink of wine or something, and then come back and watch the video and ask yourself, do I really want to put that out there? Do I really want to deal with how that's going to be perceived? So Nini um, said that she has no regrets, um, but wish that she was a little smarter in her negotiations. And going back to Nini's previous comment about her team, you know, she talked about her production team and how, you know, they didn't want her to leave. And it got me to thinking like, does this mean that the people who was working as Nini's executive producers on the show, are those people now unemployed? Because Nini's not there or will they be assigned to one of the new people that's coming in? Or were these people that Nini handpicked or were they people that Bravo picked? And so I can understand them wanting her to stay, you know, if they're going to lose their jobs as a result of her leaving. Um, I wonder if their pay is impacted. So if they are Bravo employees, if their pay is going to be impacted because they're no longer producing Nene segments, they're now producing these new people that nobody knows. And now it's like they're starting from scratch, trying to build these people up to become the mega star that Nene was in the reality TV world. And so I think that's a that's a good angle. And you know, even with Nene going through all of this, we are learning a little bit more about Nene, about the whole reality TV world and how all of this works. And so when she was talking about she wished she had been smarter in negotiations, you know, she talked about the first, the fact that Real Housewives of Atlanta is like 13 or 14 years old, but she was still making them the same mistakes in her negotiations as she did when she first started with the show. And so she really didn't understand her value. She didn't understand her worth. She didn't understand, you know, her market value that, hey, I'm going out here getting all these other gigs, which is drawing attention to Bravo, which is drawing attention to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And that's how they were able to grow you know, that platform to be as large as it is. So basically she is like an influencer and <laughs> she wasn't getting paid for being an influencer. She was being paid, you know, just as a cast member of the show. And so that's one of the things that she says that in the future, she wants to be able to help people getting in the industry to understand these things and let them know what they need to look for and you know, what they need to negotiate in their contracts. So Tamron said, uh, when I let go from a job, you know, and so she admits, you know, I've been fired before. And I think everybody, you know, whether it's your fault, you know, you overstayed, you're welcome. If it just wasn't a good fit, you know, everybody has had that moment where they have either been let go from a job, they have been, you know, a part of a layoff, they have, you know, up and quit, just gotten so upset that they just said, screw it, I'm out of here. And so, you know, Tamron says that, you know, when she's been let go from a job, all she can do is work harder on the next in, uh, next opportunity. You know, basically pick yourself up, you know, learn from the experience, what do you want to take with you and what you want to leave behind you. And so she asked Nini, you know, how do you pick yourself up? And so Nini said that, you know, she understands that this is a moment. She understands that it's not a very pretty moment. She says, but she's strong and have smart people around her and she is sure that she will rebound. And so I'm wondering if Nini is losing opportunities because of this, because she was, is she still doing the show on E? And then she had, um, it was an online show that she was doing a couple of months ago. And so I'm wondering if these opportunities have now dried up or were they short seasons where it was only, you know, eight or nine episodes, but they filmed it all in one week. Cause I haven't heard her talk about any of these opportunities, you know, in a while. And so I'm wondering if now that she's no longer with Bravo, is that going to hurt her? You know, are they talking negatively about her behind the scenes and telling other people 
don't give her any opportunities going forward because you know she's hard to deal with she's threatening to sue us you don't want to be a part of that so she may have shot herself in the foot in that aspect so Tamara said that you know you've been on the real housewives of atlanta 12 years um what support from the cast have you received and you know Nene said that half of them had reached out and been supportive, but she didn't say which half it was. We already know who wasn't in the <laughs> Kumbaya, and that probably was Miss Kenya Moore. So what else happened? Um, oh, and then Tamara asked her, what was her support system outside of the Real Housewives of Atlanta cast and Bravo. And then he said that she has Greg, she has friends, you know, outside of the show. And that her 92 year old aunt who raised her, she says it's a small circle, but it's good people that she can trust and depend on. And Tamron, you know, basically told her that this was a cautionary tale and that, you know, she really wants Nene to learn from it and to grow from it here. And what would she tell other women that are trying to get into the reality TV show business or the new women that are coming on to the Real Housewives of Atlanta? And Nene says that she really doesn't know what she would tell them, but what she knows for sure is that if you have a dream you know, she doesn't want to dim anybody's life or take light or tell them not to pursue their dream, that you know, you gotta go for it and make the best of what it is. Have a great attorney and to have a great team to look over your contracts and to basically have your back. And so Tamron asked her what was next. And she's an entrepreneur, she has several things in the works and that um, she wants to get into television and she just basically you know has to see where things go from here and so you know the last question was Tamron said okay we've had this conversation now i want to know nini are you okay and nini paused for a moment and she said yes i'm okay and then Tamron told her to pause from the gram and the tweets and if she feels like, you know, she needs to do it, just walk away. Like, don't make this situation any more negative than it has to be, you know, because she wants to be credible and she wants to be believable. And so overall, I thought it was a good interview. I thought it was some good information. On the most part, you know, understand your contract, understand who you're dealing with, you know, know your worth. Don't go into negotiations unprepared. Have your lawyers look over your contract. Have an industry person, you know, who is familiar with reality TV, who can put together a package and say, hey, she's did this, this, and this. She's brought these numbers to the show. When she's not on the show, you know, your ratings go down. When she's not on the show, social media is concerned and they're upset and they want her back on the show because you have to create a demand because they are probably looking at these women are a dime a dozen we can bring them in you know kim fields they don't work out we can send them back brought eva in she didn't make nothing happen for herself she was boring people didn't want her now we done sent her on her way the girl that was the singer who was married to the the guy from new edition you know she you know, drinking and carrying on. So they are very dispensable. And I think that Nini and other people have to understand that, you know, maybe when you're negotiating your contract, you're on the original shows, maybe you need to put in your contract that your services, you will get a full season, you know, for the next five years, if you bring this many, you know, if the show, reaches this high in the ratings, you know, just, or if there's a spinoff and you're, you know, instrumental in bringing in that spinoff, then you get this bonus, you get this, you know, each time you renegotiate your contract, you know, be able to put in there, um, this contract is for five years, this contract is for 10 years, you know, um, Andy uses them. Like I was talking to somebody on Twitter where they were selling these t-shirts you know, who, no, the mask, it wasn't t-shirts, it was the face mask, who gonna check you, boo? And I commented like, well, is Sheree getting a portion of this? But I'm sure she's not because she said that on the show and it's probably in the contract that any little slangs that they create, 
you know, that began to trend that those are the property of Bravo, that they can't market or make money off of that. And so it's little things like that that they're probably not thinking about that they're leaving out of their contracts. And then Bravo, on the other hand, can capitalize and take advantage of that. And so I'm sure this has been a great learning experience for Nini and I wish her the best in whatever she's trying to do. And so my question to you guys before we leave out of here is, do you think that Nini would be able to pull together a strong class, class action lawsuit against Bravo? What um, former housewives and former married to medicine um, cast members do you think that, I can't really think of anybody who's, well, we do have a couple of people from the original Married to Medicine, who like the Lisa, the Lisa chick, ooh, who they just treated so bad, Lisa McCoy, who was married to the guy Darren that was cheating on her, and it seemed like there was one other person that's not on that show anymore. But anyway, who are the people, leave in the comments, who are the people that you think could possibly be joining this class action lawsuit? And I have the feeling that it's not all black women, that it might be women from some of the other franchises. And do you think getting white women from the other franchises will strengthen her case? So let me know what you think. Let's talk about it in the comments. Um, like the video, rate the video, subscribe to the video, and hit the notification bell for the content that you like the most so that you can be notified when I bring that type of content to you. And so that's it for me. Until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.